searching the skies of Pandora. Here's your look at the McFarland Toys Avatar, the RDA Sea Wasp. From the Avatar The Way of the Water film comes a new vehicle in the RDA Sea Wasp. Used by the human settlers to swiftly traverse the dangerous landscape of Pandora, the Sea Wasp comes heavily armed with Gatling gun and missiles. First, before we get a closer look at the RDA Sea Wasp, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarland Toys, who did though come through and provide the sample of the vehicle that we're about to have a look at. Second to that, as I interrupt myself, at least by bringing this in, we're going to measure off the length of the Sea Wasp. Now, some assembly was required. I had to take the end of the tail that comes packaged inside the tray along with the front of the vehicle, and you have to marry them together. Factoring that, of course, in extending the length of the tape measure from the end of its Gatling gun to now the assembled tail, the Sea Wasp in length is exactly 11 inches in length. And to flip that around, you're looking at the Sea Wasp being about 28 and a half centimeters long. The Sea Wasp does come in clue with a pilot, although the pilot is already permanently installed in the cockpit and non-removable. Just to though put in perspective of how tall or how big a regular size Avatar figure is, I'm going to bring in for this review, Natiri. I don't think Natiri would be flying around anyways in a Sea Wasp, but just to give you an idea of how big the vehicle is, you know, in better actually comparisons, let's flip the vehicle up. I don't think you'd be displaying the figure like this or the vehicle like this, but you can see like the wing length or the wing height goes to about midway, uh, about midway on the wing when it, when you're stacking and comparing it along with the regular avatar figure. Oh no. Oh no. Was there a crash? Actually, no. I just removed the tail just to show you guys what steps were involved in order to assemble this when you get this out of the packaging. You get two parts, which is basically the primary hull or the main part of the ship. Then you get the part of the tail that attaches to the back end of it. The thing about the tail, though, there's an open area here to the back that's going to fit with the perfectly squared peg. And then there's this little tab piece down below. There was a few times I actually did put this in place. And this tab actually ended being part sticking out on the bottom of the hull. So when you are putting it in, you actually do want to make sure that the tab point is facing inward first. And then when that's in, just bring this up and then snap it in place. If you've succeeded in the two steps that I've just pointed out to you, then you're not going to have that little lip of plastic sticking out because it really shouldn't be. It should be inside the hull of the ship. And that's the only assembly that's really required when putting together the Sea Wasp. It's a nice looking vehicle. One thing I will say, though, is I do wish it came included with a display stand. I can't really very well hold this all the time on my shelf. So again, like there's really no way to display this short of just actually just laying it down on the shelf. One thing I did do, many very observant viewers may have noticed at the beginning of this video, I did actually use a clear stand. That clear stand so happens to be, I'm just going to bring in right now, from the DC Multiverse line. Still from the same company, but I ended up using this here for the Sea Wasp displaying. Now, it really doesn't necessarily attach anywhere. If you look actually on the on underbelly of the ship, there's no real way, 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 there's no real place that a display stand could have attached short of if they had put a hole right here and literally just included like a post display stand, which, which again, I really wish that they could have. What I ended up doing, just make shifting a, a serviceable solution. You can attach it onto the under hull. Like there's really no place where it latches onto. You may think that there's this indentation here on the back where the tail attaches onto, but it's so far to the back of the ship. Even if you extend these out, make sure they're properly onto the ship, there's too much front weight to it. So of course it's going to fall forward. I actually had it more closer to around the missile area. And then because again, the benefit of these being hingeable, I was able just to rest it on it. Now, long-term, I'm not going to do this. Long term, I think what's going to ultimately happen is the weight of the ship is going to start to buckle the plastic here for the clear clip and the clear neck. And that's going to either start developing stress marks or even, dare I say, may eventually break. I'm going to have to find a long term plan, I think, for displaying the Sea Wasp. I like the look of the ship, but I wish I could have liked the look of the ship actually attached onto a display stand instead. I'm going to take that off for right now. I'm going to move that to the side. I'm getting a closer look, though, at it. I did already allude to the fact that it does have a pilot inside. Here you can see the pilot is inside of a yellow tinted glass cockpit window. Now the window doesn't open up. I thought there may have been a latch. I thought there may have even been a little tab piece here of plastic where you could have gotten your finger onto it and opened it up. 
but there's no actually hinge there on the back either. So even if you were to pry this up, if anything, you may just be successful to pry the plastic dome off completely and gain access to the pilot. The pilot for what he is or what she is or what it is, is a nicely sculpted little figurine. And at least it looks like someone's actually piling this thing instead of this thing being on autopilot. It is heavily armed, as you can see. Several rows of missiles stored on the undercarriage of the ship. There's what, like eight, right? Eight on both sides, giving us total of then 16. There also seems to be some several rocket firing or rocket launchers here on the side as well, on the sides of the smaller wings, and also just above there as well. The Gatling gun, as you can see here on the front, while nicely detailed, doesn't actually have any articulation, which I actually thought or expected there to be. I just assumed by looking at it that it would just simply rotate back and forth, but it's permanent there and doesn't look like it's budging at all. You can see there's a little bit of yellow that they've added onto the end of the Gatling gun. It looks good. And that same yellow makes several appearances, one just above the cockpit and all around the turbine fans, as you can see on the sides of the wings. Uh, it's a nicely painted vehicle, mostly done here in a very, very light silver. But you can see that they've added some wash on there, some wear and tear, some tough, tough uh, scuff that they've added to it as, of course, the ship's been used several times. Uh, you can see as well, just by the plastic alone, how there's some darker gray, darker black that they brushed onto it. Just again, adding some wear and tear. I always like that these ships don't look clean and pristine. If you are asking the question right now, do any one of those fans do spin? Yes, they do. Thank you for asking that, by the way. Each one of these fans, by the way, do spin and spin very freely. It's easy to actually, in fact, just to flick this with your finger and have the propellers spin. You have to do this, of course, manually. There isn't any independent button that you press on the side that these would be spinning. And the smaller one, actually, you can spin from the bottom. So both of those do actually spin. And you simply just rinse and repeat. You can do the exact same thing on this side as well. So nice gold that they've added to the back there. I'm assuming those to be thrusters on the back of the tail. And some really nice, again, sculpting of the overall look of the ship. It's generally quite light of a plastic, too. I don't think there's a lot of heavy plastic being used here. And I would also imagine, too, if you were to dis disassemble this, I would imagine that this is literally just a hollow shell, a top and a bottom half sandwiched together with some right, really nice appreciated paint added in there as well. The only thing I would really, again, have said is, while this is a nice-looking vehicle, Actually, when you have a look at the upcoming videos we're going to be looking at here on this channel, McFarland toys have gone crazy when it comes to not only releasing figures, but also vehicles as well, many of which we will be looking at here on this channel. Great looking vehicle, but I do wish again there could have been a function to include a display stand. Something, even if there was just a post on the bottom, even if it was literally just a plastic post and a regular circular display base, something along those lines. It's because I like the look of the ship, but I'd like to have it looking like this on my shelf not where I'd actually just put it on the shelf and have it laying flat like this. Short-term fix for at least right now, I've got the RDA Seawasp once again attached onto the end of a display stand for a DC Multiverse figure. It's a nice solution, at least for right now. Long-term, this isn't going to fly. Literally, it isn't going to fly. First of which, I've just barely got it resting. I don't know if you, you can even see it right now. It's just barely balancing onto that clip. That clip's really intended for a waste of a figure, not for the undercarriage of a ship. As well, long term too, I happen to think that maybe the weight of it, even though it's not a really heavy vehicle anyways, but I got to think like the weight is going to start developing stress marks or even dare I say snapping the neck. No, no, no. This is short term for simply just wrapping up the review, but long term I'm going to have to plan out something better than this because I would really like to have this displayed. I could always go the route of maybe even adding a fishing line string to the top of it and hanging it from the end of my, maybe from the top of my ceiling. Ah, there's a solution as well. There's that option, or again, I might have to try to find myself a display stand, something of which I could clip onto the bottom of this so I can actually have this thing in flight all the time. I really do think that as good as this ship turned out for McFarland's team, it would have really been appreciated if they could have included a display stand. Maybe not what we have right now, but something along those sim same similar lines where it literally could have just been a big long post and plugged into the hole in the underbelly or undercarriage of the ship. Other than that, I just really do like the look of the RDA Sea Wasp. It's a nice design vehicle. I do like the way it's got the turbine fans on both the sides to keep it up. And it's got lots of firepower to, to spare. Not that I think it needs this much firepower against, well, I guess, I don't know. The humans didn't do all that well when they were fighting against the, uh, the, the, the species, of course, Na Navi from Avatar. Maybe they didn't even needed more firepower than what we actually get right now in the vehicle. But it, they are actually McFarland's team, not the Navi are actually producing a whole wide range of vehicles from the new Avatar movie. 
many of which we will be looking at in upcoming reviews. So if this is the kind of thing you certainly would like to see more of, then make sure, yes, you're keeping your Navi peepers peeled to this channel as we will be looking at more. I'm hoping right now as I'm talking away, I was a little bit distracted in mid-thought. I hope the vehicle isn't going to fall now that I've said that. Watch that. Okay. Let's not even talk anymore about that. But what do you guys, though, think of the RDA Sea Wasp? And do you agree that a vehicle like this should have really come included with the display stand? Let me know down below in the comments section. And once again, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarland's team that did provide the sample of the brand new Avatar RDA Sea Wasp. If you certainly enjoyed this video, hit the like. It's certainly, as well, if you want to stick around and see more from this channel, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn as well on the bell notification. Popping up also at the very end of this video will also be a playlist of other McFarland stuff I've looked at over the years with many future things, including more Avatar toys popping up on there as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.